Oysters by Anton Chekhov. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information and to learn how to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Translation by Constance Garnett. I need no great effort of memory to recall, in every detail, the rainy autumn evening when I stood with my father in one of the more frequented streets of Moscow, and felt that I was gradually being overcome by a strange illness. I had no pain at all, but my legs were giving way under me. The words struck in my throat, my head slipped weakly on one side. It seemed as though, in a moment, I must fall down and lose consciousness. If I had been taken into the hospital at that minute, the doctors would have to write over my bed, Fames, a disease which is not in the manuals of medicine. Beside me on the pavement stood my father in a shabby summer overcoat and serge cap, from which a bit of white wadding was sticking out. On his feet he had big heavy galoshes, afraid, vain man, that people would see that his feet were bare under his galoshes. He had drawn the tops of some old boots up round the calves of his legs. This poor foolish queer creature, whom I loved the more warmly the more ragged and dirty his smart summer overcoat became, had come to Moscow five months before, to look for a job as copy clerk. For those five months he had been trudging about Moscow looking for work, and it was only on that day that he had brought himself to go into the street to beg for alms. Before us was a big house of three stories adorned with the blue signboard with the words restaurant on it my head was drooping feebly backward and to one side and i could not help looking upward at the lighted window of the restaurant human beings were flitting about at the windows i could see the right side of the orchestrion two oleographs hanging lamps staring into one window i saw a patch of white the patch was motionless and its rectangular outline stood out sharply against the dark brown background. I looked intently and made out the patch of white placard on the wall. Something was written on it, but what it was I could not see. For half an hour I kept my eyes on the placard. Its white attracted my eyes and, as it were, hypnotized my brain. I tried to read it, but my efforts were in vain. At last the strange disease got the upper hand. The rumble of the carriages began to seem like thunder. In the stench of the street I distinguished a thousand smells. The restaurant lights and the lamps dazzled my eyes like lightning. My five senses were overstrained and sensitive beyond the normal. I began to see what I had not seen before. Oysters, I made out on the placard a strange word i had lived in the world eight years and three months and had never come across that word what did it mean surely it was not the name of the restaurant keeper but signboards with names on them always hang outside not on the walls indoors papa what does oysters mean i asked in a husky voice making an effort to turn my face towards my father my father did not hear. He was keeping a watch on the movement of the crowd, and following every passer-by with his eyes. From his eyes I saw that he wanted to say something to the passer-by, but the fatal word hung like a heavy weight on his trembling lips, and could not be flung off. He even took a step after one passer-by, and touched him on the sleeve, but when he turned round he said, I, I beg your pardon was overcome with confusion and staggered back. Papa, what does oysters mean? I repeated. It is an animal that lives in the sea. I instantly pictured to myself this unknown marine animal. I thought it must be something midway between a fish and a crab. As it was from the sea, they made of it, of course, a very nice hot fish soup with savory pepper and laurel leaves, or broth with vinegar and fricassee of fish and cabbage, or crayfish sauce, or served it cold with horseradish. 
I vividly imagined it being brought from the market, quickly cleaned, quickly put in the pot, quickly, quickly, for everyone was hungry, awfully hungry. From the kitchen rose the smell of hot fish and crayfish soup. I felt that this smell was tickling my palate and nostrils, that it was gradually taking possession of my whole body. The restaurant, my father, the white placard, my sleeves were all smelling of it, smelling so strongly that I began to chew. I moved my jaws and swallowed, as though I really had a piece of this marine animal in my mouth. My legs gave way from the blissful sensation I was feeling. I clutched at my father's arm to keep myself from falling, and leant against his wet summer overcoat. My father was trembling and shivering. He was cold. Papa, are oysters a Lenten dish? I asked. They are eaten alive, he said. They are in shells like tortoises, but in two halves. The delicious smell instantly left off affecting me, and the illusion vanished. Now I understood it all. How nasty, I whispered. How nasty. So that's what oysters meant. I imagined to myself a creature like a frog, a frog sitting in a shell, peeping out from it with big glittering eyes and moving its revolting jaws. I imagined this creature in a shell with claws, glittering eyes, and slimy skin being brought from the market. The children would all hide while the cook, frowning with an air of disgust, would take the creature by its claw, put it on a plate, and carry it into the dining room. The grown-ups would take it and eat it, eat it alive with its eyes, its teeth, its legs, while it squeaked and tried to bite their lips. I frown, but why did my teeth move as though I were munching? The creature was loathsome, disgusting, terrible. But I ate it, ate it greedily, afraid of distinguishing its taste or smell. As soon as I had eaten it, I saw the glittering eyes of a second, a third. I ate them too. At last, I ate the table napkin, the plate, my father's galoshes, the white placard. I ate everything that caught my eye, because I felt that nothing but eating would take away my illness. The oysters had a terrible look in their eyes and were loathsome. I shuddered at the thought of them, but I wanted to eat, to eat. Oysters! Give me some oysters! was the cry that broke from me, and I stretched out my hand. Help us, gentlemen! I heard at that moment my father say, in a hollow and shaking voice, I am ashamed to ask, but, my God, I can bear no more! Oysters! I cried, pulling my father by the skirts of his coat. Do you mean to say that you eat oysters? A little chap like you. I heard laughter close to me. Two gentlemen in top hats were standing before us, looking into my face and laughing. Do you really eat oysters, youngster? That's interesting. How do you eat them? I remember a strong hand dragged me into the lighted restaurant. A minute later there was a crowd round me, watching me with curiosity and amusement. I sat at a table and ate something slimy, salt with a flavor of dampness and moldiness. I ate greedily without chewing, without looking, and tried to discover what I was eating. I fancied that if I opened my eyes, I should see glittering eyes, claws, and sharp teeth. All at once I began biting something hard. There was a sound of scrunching. Ha, 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 he's eating the shells, laughed the crowd. Little silly, do you suppose you can eat that? After that I remember a terrible thirst. I was lying in my bed and could not sleep for heartburn and the strange taste of my parched mouth. My father was walking up and down, gesticulating with his hands. I believe I have caught a cold, he muttered. I have a feeling in my head as though someone were sitting on it. Perhaps it was because I have not, er... Uh, eaten anything today. I really am a queer, stupid creature. I saw those gentlemen pay ten roubles for the oysters. Why didn't I go up to them and ask them to lend me something? They would have given something. 
Towards morning I fell asleep and dreamt of a frog sitting in a shell, moving its eyes. At midday I was awakened by thirst and looked for my father. He was still walking up and down and gesticulating. End of Oysters by Anton Chekhov This recording is in the public domain. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake